Okay, hello again. Um, so today we're going to do some overdubs on the track that we have previously recorded. Um, so we have uh, an extra snare drum with an ambient mic, a tambourine track, and then some extra guitar parts. Um, so first of all, we have to um, set up. Uh, the microphones are already set up and the levels on the preamps have been set. Uh, we need to make sure that the musicians can hear themselves. So once again, I'm going to set up some uh, sends on these tracks so that they'll be sent back out to the musicians. So here we go. I'm just going to zoom in so you can get a better look. And here is our drummer headphone send. Now, once again, I can just press Alt and drag it across onto the snare drum and turn it up. You can see that's it turned up. And the same, they'll want to hear the tambourine. And the guitarist is going to be tracking at the same time. So we can make sure that the guitarist can hear some stuff, uh, can hear themselves, and they might actually also want to hear the tambourine track. So I'm going to go over. Here's my tambourine track here. And I can send some of that to the guitarist. So I'm just going to press Alt and drag across. You can see this is going to the guitar headphones. And I can turn that up. Now, the extra snare drum track, it, it's not an essential for the headphones. We can send some to the guitarist. And just like that, the guitarist or the drummer might want to hear some of the new guitar parts, the overdubs. So I can go to my new guitar parts and send some to the drummer. Probably not quite as much as that. OK, now. We are ready to overdub. Now, a lot of the time, I'm going to just arm these tracks so that we're ready to record. Um, I also have my, like I set up in the last session, my drum headphones, bass headphones, and guitar headphones. The bass player is no longer in the room playing. So just as a matter of habit, it's a good idea to mute the headphones because uh, the headphone, the set of headphones could be just lying on the ground um, spilling out into the ambient mics in the room. And whilst you'll probably get away with it, um, if it was just music coming out, because it will be masked by the actual music in the mix, but quite often you'll have a really loud click drum or a click track, which will be sent out into the room, into all the ambient mics. And then when you um, listen to your ambient mics and start bringing them in and compressing them, you'll find that the click track is spilling into your tune and it's not something that you want in your final mix uh, click track, um, especially on fade outs and things where everything else gets quiet. You can suddenly hear this click track spill on your ambient mics or on a vocal track or something like that. So it's important to make sure that any sets of headphones that are in the room are either on someone's head or muted. OK, so let's record. We're going to just go from the top and the musicians will play through the track. Um, another thing I'm going to do, which is uh, just good practice, is I'm going to keep an ear out for anything that I hear that might be a mistake. So I'm going to just keep an eye out uh, and watch the main counter. If I hear anything go awry, I'm going to just take note of what time it is. And then once the take is finished, I can quickly go and check those parts and see if the musician um, agrees that it's a mistake and if they want to do it again before they come back in uh, to the control room to have a listen to their take. OK, let's have a go.
Okay, great. So we have our overdubs recorded. Uh, I think the guitars were fine, but there was one or two little parts in the snare overdub um, that could be better. Uh, the tambourine was fine as well. So um, it was around 29 seconds. So there we have a problem. I'm going to just press enter. So enter is the um, very far bottom right button on the number pad. And we can create a memory location. And I am going to just leave it as location one. Um, there was another problem. I think it was the third uh, hit on this section. Okay, so here we have another. And I think the first hit here. Just a little bit early. So there's three little possible problems which you can um, quickly play back out because we are still sending these tracks out. If I, for example, solo these two recordings. Um, sorry, and I would have to mute everything but them. I could just send just this track out to the drummer. You can see that. So obviously I can play this back to the drummer and let them assess whether it is a little early or not. And if they want to do a quick overdub before they get up and come back into the room, it's very easy. So we're going to set that up now. Now it's just a good habit to save everything, especially with um, how cheap hard disks are these days. Um, the last thing you want to do is make a judgment on something and delete it and um, then find that the musician is looking for a certain take that uh, isn't there anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep it, even though it's got a few mistakes in it. Uh, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to set up a new group. So I'm going to select extra snare and extra snare ambience. I'm going to press command G. I'm going to call it extra snare. And once again, you can see if I zoom in, it's called F this group is. So if I press F, I can ungroup them. Press F again on the keyboard and they're grouped. Now the reason I've set up a group is because I'm going to create a new playlist. Uh, basically within Pro Tools we can just store layers um, of uh, takes on top of each other and we can access all of them because we put them onto different playlists. So if I just click on this little button here, you'll see we get new or duplicate. Now a new playlist will create a blank uh, track uh, with no audio on it for us to record onto again and we would select new if we were if the whole band was doing multiple takes or we were going to go from the start to the end again with this but seeing as we're the majority of the take is perfect it's just one or two bits we're going to click duplicate so that's going to create a new playlist um, which has the audio from the previous one on it so I'll just press duplicate and you can see now it becomes ex uh, extra snare a one and I could go back to my original playlist and nothing has changed within the audio track because it's duplicated the audio to both playlists but you'll be able to see what happens now when I overdub. So we could ask the musician to play again from the start but seeing it's only one or two beats I'm going to just punch in and punch out on certain sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my transport bar so that is command and one on the number pad and we can see we're here at 29 seconds where the mistake was. I'm going to open, I'm going to set a pre-roll and a post-roll. Now the pre-roll means that if I select here, wherever I select, it will play back from seven seconds I've set it to. So here's seven seconds earlier. You can see that the markers are here. So post-roll is four seconds. If I set it to five, you'll see the time change. Keep an eye on this guy and it's moved to five seconds. Um, so you, you generally don't want to have these turned on because it will obviously play from five seconds before where you've selected in the track. It can be quite annoying. But when we're actually doing an overdub, it can be quite handy. What, what it means is I can select the point that I want to record over. I can just press record and play and the track will start from seven seconds earlier, giving the musician enough time to get ready to play the hit. 
And then the post roll is just as important because if a musician um, is recording and it just cuts dead after they've played the note, um, it can be very jarring. So it's better if it continues playing on. The other brilliant thing about Pro Tools is when it's in punch mode, so we can select different modes for recording, normal, loop, destructive, and quick punch. The second you press play, it's actually recording. So I've selected this section. Actually, make it, let's make it a little bit tighter. And we might actually be cutting some of the ambience, but you'll see afterwards I'll be able to actually drag back some of this recording because it's actually going to record from seven seconds beforehand and seven seconds after. So let's record. So I have it in punch mode. I've got pre-roll and post-roll. I just press play. And turn off pre and post roll, and let's have this. And there we have it. Now you can see I can actually drag out because it was recording the whole time from seven seconds beforehand to seven seconds after. Here, or sorry, five seconds after. And we can obviously go and listen to the previous recording, which was the original take, by just dragging out. Which had the mistake on it, and I can drag, I can just undo that and go back to my new take. So now we have the previous recording with our little punch in, and I can do the same here. So I'll just select the section I want to record over. It'll give seven seconds of run in. Turn on my pre and post roll. Press record and play. And much better. And now I'll go to the final section. And I will just press record and play. And I'm not going to make a selection. I'll just actually stop it after. Um, so let's just record. And on that one, I just manually knocked it out of uh, record, which is just as easy to do. But sometimes you have a, a little section, maybe a guitar solo, where there's a few notes that need to be redone. And you get the musician to just play the same guitar solo over and over. And you can actually select just replace one or two notes in each take. Um, and instead of you sitting there ready to hit the play, uh, the record button, it's very, very handy. Now that we're back to just working on the track, I'm going to take out my pre and post roll so that when I press play, it just plays from the point of selected. Now we can just have a look at the different playlists. So I'll disarm these tracks. I'll just look at the playlists and we have the original take and now we have our new playlist, which has our new overdubs within it. Okay. Uh, and I'm just selecting waveform is what we normally look at. And you can select playlist and it will show you all the different playlists. Okay, we're ready to mix.